Thank you. Hi. Uh, for starting the conference, we were thinking about maybe something about scaling, what is scaling, what you need to know, and uh, introduce something about that. <clears throat> when you speak about scaling, you say, my application is bigger and bigger, and I have to manage that. There is two ways to manage that. First, you can be fat and fat, have a fat application in fat servers, and it will be killed, it explodes, it becomes weird. It's not a good idea in my, in my way of thinking. Or you can have a team, a team of applications working together, a team of things working together to make something cool and working. Yes, we can also have a fat team on super hero working together to make something great. This is the difference between scale out and scale up. If you scale out, you have many workers doing the same thing. You have no single point of failure. You can growing and you introduce back practice in new code base. This is why the real question is how to scale out. I will just share some facts and share some good practice I learned in the time. The first thing is you need to split between process and storage. Because everything in your application is only process or storage. Process is something who takes the data, transforms the data, makes something else. Storage is all the data. And you have to split all your application between the two things. The statelessness is the key of good application. In fact, when you have an application, it has to be just the clone of another instance. One instance, two instances, three instances, the same thing. It's, it's very important of picking one instance doesn't change anything to the content of the request. In fact, you have to consider a lot of things as data. User accounts as data, sessions as data, uh, users' data as true, uh, the files, the sessions, and even the events inside your application are data. And if you split and pick correctly what is data and what is process, you can grow your application more easily. You have to, to choose your data store wisely. In fact, when you are consider you have process and data, Data store is the key of growing. And in many applications, you don't have to choose one data store or one database. You have to choose many data store and find the good ways to bring them together to work. Just an example. Do you need atomicity of request? Are you making some transaction with your data? Do you need some concurrent access in your data? Uh, is it read-write? For example, if you store the logs, you may leave right. Do you need a relation between your data? Or big storage capacity, are you under uh, hundred of terabytes of data or just a few gigabytes? Do you need high availability? If a data store fail, all the application fail? When, when I take this kind of decision, I, I, I have just several questions. If I need to store sessions, I think, okay, I know not a big volume of data. Um, uh, the data uh, is um, TTL marked. You, the, the data of a session have a time to leave. Uh, the, the, the relation between data are very simple. You are just a key value system. And uh, uh, you have to write at the, uh, at the same time in multiple. So. If you take PostgreSQL for manage this kind of thing, it's, it's, it's okay for the volume. Some database like React doesn't like to, to manage about uh, some megabytes of uh, some gigabyte of data. They like to manage a lot of terabytes, but PostgreSQL can handle just a few pieces of data. But the database itself cannot man manage the time to live. The data model, okay. PostgreSQL can do many things, but the data model is not key value. You cannot write at the same time because PostgreSQL guarantee you you have atomicity of the request. But you can have high availability. But I think it's a not a good choice for star station. 
If you take Redis for start station, you have the same problem. The multiple writes at the same time are not possible in this technology right now. And the availability is a little bit complicated because you, you need to find a way to clusterize the connection to, 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 to balance the connection of the Redis cluster. It's not very easy. But if you choose Codebase, you, you set up all the requirements. This quiz example is just made to say to you, please checklist what you need to do with the data and set up the good technology to do it. Use all that database to test it. One, when I speak to, to, to people and say, you need to do something with data, choose this database or this not, this, they say to me, it's hard to install, it doesn't work on my Mac, uh, I don't uh, try in another program before. Today, it's very simple to use an online database. You just, for just a few euros or every, any time for free, you can use a technology you don't know, very hard to install, yeah, like Hadoop or something like that, and you can be ready to make some tests in a few minutes. So you don't need to trash your computer, and you, you can test a large part of technology in this way. The problem in tech industry is, OK, real news. Not just Mongo for your project. Uh, what we need to do? No, it's a big problem, because people right now using technology because they love it, or because it's hype, not because it fits your needs. In fact, when you start to making a software or a piece of software, you're thinking about, does it require my needs? The other thing, people say, OK, but it's a, the only platform, languages I know. Just balance the time of learning curve and the time you can save using the right technology to do the, 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 the task. Don't make monsters. <clears throat> For example, of monsters, we have a lot of things, this is not a good idea, like make a job queue with MySQL and cron. It's a monster. It's a mutant. If you take a technology and crash it to try to make something else, so what it's doing to do, what, what is the meaning be, behind the technology, you will have ops problem. It will work on your computer but it not will work when you scale. Choose your technology wisely for what they are done to do. All people make mistakes, and <laughs> there are some common mistakes. Do not use your RAM as a database, please. Every time you say, okay, this is a shared variable, or this is a global variable, uh, no, I have to cache in the code, like in the map, and the access in that. Um, when you use the session for store the, the, the connection to the database, yes, I said that before, uh, <clears throat> you will have security problem, and you cannot scale. Your memory are just here to take some information, process it, and be flush. In fact, you have to think you have to split the code and the data store. This is quite important. In fact, just thinking about an, an operation theater. We take a, a, a patient, operation, clean, flush. patient, flush, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the, the way is, if, if you, you operate the patient with the same tools without cleaning or something like that, that the other patients, there will be a very big problem. This is the same thing you have to think about your request and your operation. In fact, when you put some inputs in your process, in your, in your application, in your instances, the output will be always the same. Same input, same output. It's, it's, it's a rule. If I say two and two, it will be four. And it never change. So if I get the home page with a session, I will have always the same page. It's quite important. Your variable have a life very short. 
The other thing about store some data in variable in your memory is code will fail. It always fails, even mine. And your data will be lost. So if you are making some transaction and thing like that, don't store data in variable. No, it's not a problem. They make a request, and just after that, they make another request for confirm. I can store this in a global variable. No, it will fail at a time, and it doesn't allow you to scale. Just put it in a data store, and never, never, never do this in memory. Another thing is do not use file system. In fact, I think I'm the boss of the only platform as a service who allow people to use the file system. So I'm the best people to say you it's a bad idea. Because <clears throat> there is, you know, people are thinking there is no problem. We will be f find a free a single point of file, a multi-tenant file system. We can moon on master, master, master in every cluster. So, no, it's a unicorn. It's very cool. It's far to shamalo, but it's a unicorn. So store in a database or data store like simple storage from Amazon, something dedicated to file management, but never store it in your file system because file system doesn't scale. It's, uh, it's a good thing to session to. In fact, a lot of session system are using the file system with small file. Use something like memcached, couchbase, whatever you want, but don't use file system to store data, please. <clears throat> Have a careful use of dark magic. When you are using a technology like framework, we show you amazing thing. Just read how it works. It remember a project where we are using Lyft from Scala World. So the thing is, Lyft is very stateful. It doesn't scale. Okay, it's magic. You write three line of code and you have an amazing thing. But it doesn't scale because you are using dark magic without knowing what is done. So be careful about dark magic. Try to understand how work framework or library you use to be sure they respect good practice. Split your code. In fact, if you have a bit on fat code base, it will be very difficult to, to manage because more the code base is, is big, more it's hard to find the bug. So split your code in small code and small application, deploy a service for each other, and the best thing is you can choose to use many technology in your application because if you split it in many code base, you can use one language or another language and use it for the right performance and the right specification for what you are doing. And use event broker to modernize your app. It's something I don't understand. Many people don't use uh, event broker. La when I say all is data, events are data. Put it in IMQP, RabbitMQ, something like that. Even if in Redis, not really a message broker, but okay, it fits for me. I prefer you use Redis, so you use nothing. And use an event broker to modularize your app and say, okay, you can manage a different thing in the same place. Just warning, con is not an event broker. <laughs> if you are using some cron with a database where you are putting some lines and things like that, it's not a good idea because you are creating a, a high pack of consumption and it's not good for scaling. So please try to install some event broking. It's now very easy to use and allow you to async your application. And it's all of you to make art, computi art computation asynchronously, it's very better for scaling because you don't have to say, okay, I have a huge calculator, I don't uh, uh, take your request. This is quite a big problem, in fact, in application. You have to have requests 
almost equivalent in consumption of resources and time on each model. It's a good thing to do to scale easily. You will thank me one day for this. You have always to use a reverse proxy. For each time you do, because the thing we are taking the request from the clients, it's very hard to, to change. The request flow is very hard to relocate. Uh, to relocate. And a reverse proxy has nothing to do except taking, giving, taking, giving. And it's a good thing. It will save your life one day, sure. So always use a reverse proxy in front of your application. Use process development, uh, deployment. If your application is hard to install, if you have to take a server and set up it and say, OK, we have to think about uh, what are the dependencies, uh, copy the code, make the compilation, it's too hard. You never scale with this kind of thing because it's too long, it's too complicated to scale. You need to use process deployment. Uh, even if you are not using a platform as a service, use a build system, very configurable, and make something very easy to scale. Okay, you will fail, you will have problem. So keep calm on fire, always keep calm on fire. Get some metrics, track the bug, and find a good way to kill the bug. A few weeks ago, uh, I deployed an application just split into five sub modules. We have hundreds and thousands of people in the application. It was for a big customer, I don't, I don't say the names, I can, do, I can do. We redeploy each module about six times in a day. Nobody saw that because the application was modular using event system, so we're correcting the bug in all the flow, all the day, and they are never done time, never a request will fail. <laughs> so, try the bug, get some metrics, and be happy for that. Thank you a lot for that scale to invite me here, and uh, it's time for questions.